All right, everybody, um, back with a video about troubleshooting the stepper motor and the read right head not moving. In my last video, um, I removed the circuit board and it turned out that P7 was the issue. But what I figured I'd do in this video is actually go through the troubleshooting steps as found. Um, I'll, I'll do a link to it, I think. Uh, what the heck is it called? I don't know the name of the book, but there's a book out there, Sam's Computer Facts, that's what it is. Sam's Computer Facts has a book on uh, troubleshooting the 1541, and it has um, specific steps here on troubleshooting. And this command right here, or this um, little program right here, that will actually move the stepper motor and the uh, read-write head probably from track 1 to track 30. That's what I think it's doing, maybe initializing the drive and then... Um, moving it from track 1 to track 30. That's what I think it's doing. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, it also tells you to um, check plug 7 for good connections. And then it tells you to check various IC, um, various pins on the different ICs um, for different lengths and stuff. So I mean different um, signals. Duh, I can't talk as usual. Um, but basically the chips that we're going to check are this... 6522 right here as well as this chip which is it's a custom chip it's um 325572 I think so it's a custom chip and basically there's a couple signals from here that go into this chip and then from this chip it goes um to the 7406 which is right there hopefully you can see that right there the 7406 and then from that 7406 uh, it goes through to these transistors here, which I believe are, does it say what kind they are? I looked them up. They're like 22 SC, 22 something, 01s or something like that. I'm not positive. I can, I'll come back to that. But you can actually grab it at the unbanded side, the signal at the unbanded side, the collector of those diodes right there. Um, I'll probably point to them this way. So we're going to check these two pins here on the 6522. We're going to check these four pins here. Then we're going to check different pins on the 7406. Uh, and then the collector, we're going to check for voltage. And we're going to do it on the unbanded side of these diodes right here. Um, and that's what gives the, the signal for the stepper motor to actually move. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. Real quick, this is the command right there. If I can, sorry about that. That's the command we're going to be running. I'll pause just a quick second in case anybody wants to do, can't find it or whatever. But that's the command we're going to run. And the way I'm going to troubleshoot it is I'm actually going to unplug P7 right here. Um, and run the command so this is, we can check the signals while the stepper motor is not running um, and then we'll plug it back in so be right back all right I'm running the command um, I didn't realize I pressed start um, but this the first thing we're going to do is look at the U UC2 right there and we're going to look at um, pins 10 and 11. So let me hopefully do this without my hands in the way. And maybe adjusting my volts per division. Alright, so I was experimenting because I couldn't get my scope to actually lock on to a signal, but I will show it on the scope. But I think it's better to show it with um, with a, a logic probe. So what I did is I just hooked up my red of my logic probe, my positive, to the positive of this capacitor here, which is I think C14, and then hooked up my negative down here just to the frame. Um, this is tied to, to negative right there. So 
So let's um, go ahead and run our program. Let me type in run. Run. All right, and then we'll start probing. And now, remember, I have P7 disconnected. Let's see if you can see this okay. Yeah, you can see that, I think. So that's what it should be looking like. You know, toggling and getting a signal. I think that's pin 10 and 11. Pin 10, 11 of UC2. And then we're going to go to pin 15 through 18 of, the, um, of UC1. And all of these, you have good signal. So if we didn't have good signal there, we would think something was wrong. And now it says go to the collector side of these um, Q11, Q8 through Q11, I think. Does it say? Yeah. Oh, no, it says um, go to, you should see 6 volts on pin 4, 6, 8, and 10 of this IC here called UD1. Um, but just to look at it from a logic probe standpoint, since it's six should be six volts, you should see low, but it is toggling. So it says six volts peak to peak. And I'll put that on the scope, but I couldn't lock on to a signal because it's toggling probably so fast or something. I don't know why. But that's what it should look like with a logic probe. Kind of just some activity, but staying low. And then if we come to the diodes, which is the collector side of these transistors, the unbanded side of these diodes is the collector side of these transistors here. Those all look low. And they should be 12 volts, so they should be high. But I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna power it off and then um, plug in my P7 and then come back and measure that as well. All right, I'm back with the scope, um, and I was listening back to the video. <laughs> and uh, let me see here. I think, um, what was it? It was this chip right here, which is UD1. Um, I said it was six, supposed to be 6 volts, and that you're measuring on pins 4, 6, 8, and 10. It's actually 0.6 volts. And then I wanted to maybe mess around with my scope a little bit and adjust the um, seconds per division a little bit. So we'll run our command again and then uh, measure what it looks like. And basically this is zero volts here and then the first radicule or whatever is uh, one volt. So you can see that's basically about half of a volt, it's definitely less than a full volt um, peak to peak as far as that signal. So if I just go look at all the all the pins on that, it looks pretty good. And I modified my program so it would only run five times, so I have to hit run again. And if we just kind of chain, go lower, like into the milliseconds for seconds per division, you can kind of see it a little bit better probably. But, you know, as I go higher, I think I was all the way up into like one second or a half a second. So it's a little bit harder to see. That makes it a little bit easier. Same thing with pins 10 and 11 on the 6522. We type in run. Now you can see it going, you know, 5 volts and changing from 0 to 5 volts pretty pretty rapidly from a signal standpoint. And that's what we saw on the on the logic probe as well, the activity, but now you can actually see it a little bit on the scope.
just checking the different pins of the I did some more reading so this is actually the PL this is a PLA so it's a programmable um, logic array I guess and then the 6522 is outputting for the stepper motor it's outputting signals here which then get split into four signals and then those get I guess buffered and inverted um, with this 7407 which then comes to uh, the collector side of these transistors which you can also measure on the non-banded side um, here and you can see it it's actually got 12 volts I don't know if you guys can see that here but it's reading 12 volts on my DC measurement 12.25 volts so let me pause real quick um, and show you one more thing. So with uh, pin 7 is actually going to the stepper motor which obviously looks like it's you know a coil or something um, and it's telling you that I got this diagram from the uh, service repair manual that I'll link to in the video but we can take ohm readings um, on this and um, and test the stepper motor itself to see if I guess the whatever the coil there is um, is shorted or something like that or reading out of spec um, the other thing I wanted to show real quick is in this diagram this is pin 7 and pin 1 and 2 are basically um, what is pin 1 and 2 black and brown I think black and brown and so there's black and brown right there which is sending 12 volts um, through and you can see that basically that 12 volts goes into the stepper motor and most likely comes back to the collector side of those transistors there and it's the 0.6 volts that's coming off the 7406 that's hitting the base and then activating that transistor down there so I don't know understand it fully but basically if I unplug this pin we won't have 12 volts if I unplug um, P7 we won't have 12 volts um, at the collector side of Q9 um, Q8 Q9 Q10 and Q11 we won't have 12 volts if P7 is disconnected because that it's getting that voltage somehow through the motor itself um, coming through like that so um, I think that's did I want to show that maybe I could yeah let's at least test yeah, I'll just show the, the lack of 12 volts here. I'll power this off. And if I power it on, and then I take my meter here. I don't know if you could see it before, but on the non-banded side, I have no voltage now. Whereas before I had 12 volts on the non-banded side. And that, I think that should be cycling as well when I actually run the command. So let's put it back on. And I'm, I'm powering it off as I do this here. All right, now we're running the command and we're just checking voltage here. Yeah, it's definitely cycling. Oh, you can't see it because I need to... There you go. Definitely cycling to, you know, above 5 volts, which is what I had my um, volts per division scale to. So I had to change that to give you an idea. So if everything's working correctly, you should have 12 volts on the unbanded side of those diodes, which are, what, C, R, C, D, or C, whatever. I don't know what it is. I'll be yeah, right Yeah, you can't really see it here, but it's like C, CR8, CR9, CR10, CR11 are those um, those diodes. So the, the last thing we can do is actually um, check resistance. And it's a little bit difficult to do this. Let me pause. Actually, the 12 volts are the two red lines. So 12 volts is coming in there on that side, and 12 volts is coming in. That's pin 1 and 2 are the two red um, connectors and if we did I power back off I 
hopefully you can see that. And if we measure um, black to brown, coming in the back side of it, hopefully. 67, 67 ohms, it's supposed to be 64 um, from black to brown and from black to red or brown to red, it should be uh, about half of that. I know you can't see what I'm doing. I'm just probing the back of this connector here. Let me see. <laughs> Pain in the butt. Because these connectors are real small. And I don't have great light right here. Yeah, 30, 34 ohms with brown to red and black to red should be the same. And then orange to red and orange to yellow 67 so anyway that's how you can just probe the back of that connector right there and you can check do a resistance check on the stepper motor you can do also the same thing on the spindle motor and and the read write coils and stuff like that too so this was from the uh, service manual which is useful so anyway I think that wraps up this video. I just wanted to come in and actually show you what the signals were supposed to look like on a probe. Again, on this U, uh, UD1, it's 0.6 volts peak to peak, not 6 volts. That's why we were seeing it low on the logic probe, because it was less than a volt um, peak to peak. And then I had to adjust my oscilloscope uh, seconds per division to actually um, get it to show something um, somewhat on on the system so this is also this is a pla this is a via um and unfortunately if one of these is bad i mean they're kind of custom chips so you have to hopefully they're not bad and it, your problem if you're seeing this video is as simple as reseeding this connector like it was for me all right hope that helps talk to you guys later bye